Javante Adrian El Presidente Eddie Kane University Hill going Hill Regardless You B. Cannon Bethel High School By way of Three Man Weave LLC Michelle Producer Adrian You can catch this wave From the Marlins To the Mariners Doing things you can't believe It's the Three Man Weave Yo, 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 what's good, everybody out there? You already know who it is. You got your favorite guys from your favorite podcast, the Three Man Weave Podcast. It's your host with the most, the boy, your boy, Cannon. Um, AJ ain't here tonight, so it's me and Hill. We riding solo, but we do got something special for y'all. Um, so, Hill, let them know where, we can, where they can find us at. You know, Hill going Hill regardless, baby. And, you know, you can catch us on all major podcast platforms, Three Man Weave, Instagram, Twitter, Three Man Weave, underscore. You can email us at podcast.3.man.weave at gmail.com. Let's get it. Let's say, hey, this second week in a row, I can, I'm Haymaker Hill, baby. Haymaker hey, Hill. Haymaker Hill, baby. Two, week, two weeks in a row, so we don't want to hold you back. Look. Yeah. So, look, AJ done left us in his solo, so... We decided to do something special with y'all. Y'all know we've been talking a lot of boxing lately. So look, I'm not even going to cap. We got something real special for y'all. We got young, up and comer, mm -hmm. future of boxing, again, mm -hmm. Golden Boy Promotions, Ooh, okay. 135, undefeated, two KOs, professional, slick, Nick Sullivan okay. and born born in P-Town, huh? Coming out of Norfolk. So look, huh? 757 stand up. We're gonna bring Slick Nick in here and he's gonna introduce himself. What's good with you, Slick? What's up with you, fellas? I appreciate y'all having me on once again, my man. It's an honor. No doubt. It's an honor and a privilege to have you on, man. So look, man, Hill and myself. AJ, our other counterpart, we've been watching you. Um, we like what we're seeing so far. So tell us how Slick Nick got started in the boxing game. Man, you know, the typical, typical kid story, attitude problem, mm -hmm. anger problem, fighting a lot. And my mama was just, my mama was honestly sick of her. She was like, I was playing other sports like baseball, basketball, you know, typical kid sports. But my mama just was like, this attitude, this, this anger. Where is it coming from? And it's not going anywhere, and it's only getting worse. So we got to mm -hmm. put that that anger, that negative energy, somewhere positive. So one of the coach Gloria Pete was actually my first coach. Okay. My mama has her own hair salon. She walked into my mom's hair salon, and it's just ironic. This one day, I had just beat up some some one of my mama customer kids in the back of her hair salon, and then the coach walked into the shop to get her hair down. I don't know how ironic that is, but. It was ironic that she walked in there and then the coach was just like, you should bring him past the gym. You know what I'm saying? Let mm -hmm. him get some of that anger off. But you know, my mama like, yeah, he needs to taste his own medicine. He needs somebody <laughs> to beat him. He needs somebody to beat him up. But little D she know in the back of my mm -hmm. head, I'm like, Mom, at that day, I'm like, Mom, ain't nobody messing with me for real. I go in that gym yeah. and run yeah. through everybody. Mm -hmm. So I go to the gym. And I was there for like a week. I went to sit and watch the first day. I was like, oh, yeah, you you fighting. They train you to fight, and you don't get in trouble for this. This is something I want to do. Yeah. So yeah. I go I go to the gym. I watch the first day. Then I train for a week after that. Then they throw me into sparring. And the first time I sparred, it was just, I don't know. I did I did good. Like, the dude been there boxing longer than me, and I actually beat him up. Mm -hmm. Like he get no, don't get me wrong. Like he gave me a run for my money, but for me to not be a boxer, I I beat him up, and yeah. it was just something fun to do. And I didn't start taking boxing serious till I was like twelve or thirteen. I thought I won my first belt at the National Civil Gloves. Then I was like, yeah, I could turn this into a career. That's when I started getting into boxing. I I started liking Floyd Mayweather. Then my research on Pernell Whitaker, mm -hmm. and then it's crazy. Pernell Whitaker is one of my, my favorite fighters. And come to find out, my mama was doing his ex-wife hair. Wow. Ron, mm -hmm. Ron, 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 I forgot her first name. Ron, Ronde Whitaker, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 
So it was just, I felt like it was just meant for me to be a boxer. It was just, everything would just ironically happen. So I felt like it was just meant for me to be a boxer when I sat down and thought about it. Wow. Uh, so that makes, that makes perfect sense because you being from the 7-5 and you had an inspiration from Pernell Whitaker. And I was wondering, I'm like, a young dude got an inspiration from Pernell Whitaker. You did your homework, you did your research, but now it all makes sense to intertwine and it yeah. really made sense. So yeah. what, yeah. What, did, what did you pick up from his game? I learned a lot from him, good and bad. I learned that your life outside of the ring is just as much Wow. It's just as much as good as inside of the ring. Because you're like outside the ring. If you believe it or not, you outside of that ring more than you are inside of the ring. So outside life actually plays a bigger part than inside of the ring. And looking at him, I see that he went from nothing to a superstar that back to nothing. Yeah, absolutely. Also, he, couldn't, he couldn't take care of how he had the outside of the ring. And then, you know, once he got to a certain level, he just felt like he was better than everybody. I always... I'm always humble enough to know I ain't better than nobody, but I do know that I'm different. So with that being said, you can move accordingly to that. That's not being cocky. That's not, you know what I'm saying? Saying I'm better than you, but it's certain situations and certain people that you just cannot be around no more once you make it to a certain level. And that's what we always try to tell uh, younger, the younger generation. Don't be afraid to look at the history. And it's not the yeah. fact that we're trying to make it seem like, oh, the back in the day is so much better. It's like you can learn from their mistakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't have so you don't have to make these mistakes, and I'm glad you said that. Yeah, definitely, because a lot of fighters will look at a fighter and be like, "He fight perfect. He do this. He do that. He undefeated. It's nothing he doing wrong. Yeah, it might not be nothing he doing wrong in the ring, but what is he doing outside the ring? What is he doing for his people? Is he giving back? Is he doing yeah. this? Is he doing that? Yeah. It's not always just inside of the ring. Yeah, that's very true. Um, well, um, we did have one of your, uh, you know, one of your professional counterparts on this show. Um, and, uh, normally I wouldn't bring up any other boxers during your interview. Um, but yeah. you are sparred recently. Um, and I actually happen to know Jaleel Hackett personally. So, uh, so one, tell me your thoughts about, uh, Jaleel Hackett and then tell me what you think about y'all sparring session. Man, that's that's for one. That's definitely one of my 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 boxing brothers. We came up together, and he's definitely gonna be something special in the sport. There's no doubt in my mind. I I bet every fight tech that mm. he's gonna be the next up and coming big thing in the sport. And mm. that sparring session was like the Manny Pacquiao and Floyd mm. Mayweather. Um, the Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather fight. It was so anticipated, like. Um, Oh, oh, week they were talking about coming down. Jaleel could spawn. So other guys were sparring. Once me and Jaleel got in there, the whole gym was quiet. I'm promising mm-hmm. you, could've, you could have heard a penny drop or yeah. a penny drop in the gym. Everybody just in silence watching. Like nobody warming up, nobody nothing. Everybody's watching. And we just mm. was going, going, going. Somebody had to say, yo, when you going to let somebody else spar? for us to stop because we were just going we was yeah that's that yeah. good work that's that good yeah work. that's definitely the heart of two fi- champions fireworks yeah, yeah and they you know what they say definitely fireworks still sharp and still so you know um definitely. so look one thing i want to so i know you 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 know you've been boxing at 135 do you plan on yeah. staying at 135 do you feel like you can no, dominate sir. there do you want to move around sure. and and also what is your walking around weight if you could share that with us no no sir i do not plan on staying at 35 i do plan on getting a title or getting about 35 but once again i am a growing man my, my mm-hmm. father is two my father is six two 225 pounds so wow i don't i'm not i'm not gonna be this size forever and i, I am a grown man as well and my walk around weight is almost 160 mm-hmm. 157 160 mm-hmm. okay okay so at at one 157 160 how difficult how difficult is it to to get down to 135 and if golden boy was to say if oscar de la Hoya was to say nick we, we need you to fight in two weeks um could you make that weight Definitely, because 
when I'm like if I'm constantly, constantly in the gym, once I start my tour days, the, the weight comes off just like that. Mm-hmm. But once it's just like when I'm when I'm bullshitting like in the gym, they go I don't got no fight coming up. You know, it's like my rest time. I ain't got no fight coming up, but I'm steady training just to keep my body in shape. That's when I hit like 155. But when I'm constantly in the gym working, working, working. I don't get no bigger than 147, 146. So that weight comes off just like that. Mm-hmm. And then once I start eating right, you know, I don't, I can, I can be, I'm gonna sit up here and be honest with you. I don't always eat right, which I should, but I don't always eat right. I'm pretty sure it's a lot of boxers that might lie and say they eat well all the time. Man, mm-hmm. we all human. We all yep. like snacks. We all yep. like. Man, I'm a, I ain't coming. I ain't coming on y'all show the front. None of that, man. I do not eat like I'm supposed to eat. And <laughs> I don't eat how I'm supposed to eat. But when it's fight time, I'm definitely locked in. That's a fact. But, but what so we respect weeks, the if they were to say two weeks, I need you to fight. I could definitely get down to 35. They actually want me to get down to 130. Cause my mm-hmm. last fight, they were they was like, man, he'll be a pretty tall, tall, rangy. 130 so they was they was in talks about getting me down to 130 me my coach and my assistant coach which is mark two shot mm-hmm. they were just like man just train and just see how your body feel and i okay. really i really ain't tried to hit 130 but i honestly know that i can hit 130 because i fought at 123 one time in the amateurs walking around 140 something so okay yeah how was the amateurs for you Amateurs was fun. Amateurs was fun. I really liked the amateurs. To be honest, I, it was some good times in the amateurs. I met a lot of good guys. Most of these up and coming guys that that you all are talking to, I didn't spar with, train with, mm-hmm. everything. Like Keyshawn Davis, I grew mm-hmm. up with him in the gym. We both started together. But Rob Park, he came in two weeks after I started boxing. Okay. Wow. That leads into when I support a question. He said, "What gyms do you recommend in the seven five seven area for boxing?" Um, you know, I'm a, of course I'm gonna say my gym number one. That's 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 out the picture. Of course I'm gonna say my gym, and it's a lot of people in the seven five that will say our gym as well. But you know, I don't really I don't really shit on on gyms and fighters here. So I'm gonna say every gym here okay. is a good gym. But personally, I would say come to my gym. So I, I ain't here to 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 separate because we all a team when one make when one make it from here everybody make it I'm, I'm not gonna sit up here and try to separate saying we better than them mm-hmm. come to our gym i personally say my gym because that is my gym but yeah. every any gym in the 757 you want to get in the box you want to learn how to fight any gym wherever area you in any gym but i personally prefer my gym because that's my gym <laughs> what's it what's the type what's the name of your gym norfolk hicks wide boxing Okay. Oh, hit, yeah. You gotta knock somebody out. Of hit yeah. squad. You can't, <laughs> you can't come in there and be the hit squad. And hit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That like got that got to be a prerequisite for you even be a member. <laughs> yeah, that's you a ain't fact. play around you know, with the hit squad, bro. That's crazy. I'm gonna talk to my coach right there. You didn't put a little, you put a little, a little memo in my head. I'm gonna talk to. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's the hit. This is a privilege to be in the yeah. hit squad, bro. Like, that's come on, fact. man. That's a fact. You gotta live up to the name. So, so listen, man. We got a lot of young supporters. You know, a lot of aspiring athletes. Um, So, talk to us about how the whole the deal with Golden Boy came about. How do you go about? There's a there's a thousands of amateur boxers. How do you get noticed by a major amongst all of those? And, And what advice could you give to any up and coming? athlete that you know may want to dabble in boxing okay so i'm gonna start off with how go to more guys are looking at me it's not all about what you know but it's about who you know as well but also my my amateur background spoke for itself as well mm-hmm. and when i won the national go when i got the silver medal at the national golden gloves and when I won the state and regionals two two years running and got the Golden Boy Award two years running, that definitely opened up their eyes. And I was mm-hmm. sent the contract after my, my third time doing the Golden Gloves. So that definitely opened their eyes. But I, I had eyes on me already, but that definitely opened their eyes for Golden Boy. They sent the contract immediately after I got back from the Nationals. I think I wasn't even back from the Nationals two weeks and got a contract sent to me. So I was not like, even though I didn't win, 
I was not tripping because I already knew once I got back, mm -hmm. it was pro time. Like, I was yeah. not tripping at all. <laughs> I was not tripping. I, everybody walking around there like, how can you be so happy? You got the silver medal, man, because I know when I get back, it's on to money now. I'm about to, yeah. I'm about to be getting paid for this. Yeah. So, you, got, you always got to look at the bigger picture. A lot of guys be stuck in the moment. Yeah, don't nobody like to lose. But shoot, you lost. You can't take it back. So now it's like, what you gonna do to not lose no more? Mm -hmm. We got a supporter question. You say you ever see yourself going the MMA route? It seemed like no, that's sir. where the money. <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> sir. Um, um, if that was, if that's the case, I might as well just street fight somebody out here on the street. That joint ain't nothing. Not, that ain't that ain't nothing but organized street fight. Yeah, man, it's deadly. <laughs> it's definitely deadly, man. Nah. Now the MMA dudes can come over here to boxing and see me, but I'm not going to them. Yeah, that's smart. That's definitely smart. Um, yeah. yeah, man. Um, he lost your train of thought, huh? Yeah, because I had I was gonna ask him something yeah, about what he was saying, but that MMA question threw me off. Right when it comes to that, you can come over I, here and fight me. I feel you, <laughs> and I feel you. you ain't gonna kick me. I'm gonna let you know right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, so all right, we know you from the 757. I listen, I was born in Hampton, uh, grew up in Hampton and Newport News. Uh, Hill, he he from P Town Port, all Port day, all day, Portsmouth all um, day. You know, right now we we located in the, in, the, in the DMV area, but one, when did you know? as an amateur that you really like what age did you know like i got a chance to like go pro and and how were you able to dodge the pitfalls of being in the 757 well all that comes with that we know what comes with that how were you able to keep your head clean because so many other people don't have that those opportunities that you may have so how were you able to dodge those pitfalls yeah. that the average black male falls into coming out of the 757 it's actually a mindset thing to be honest it's, it's you you just got to know that you're different it's easy to get sucked in into your environment like when you're around nothing but crime and you see this and you see that you just become a, a reflection of your environment but you gotta your mindset just gotta be strong enough to like nah like it's other ways like i'm not i'm not even gonna hold you like i said i ain't gonna sit up here in front i've been mm -hmm. in, in federal trouble before mm -hmm. federal probation you see the mug shot out on my page all of that it's just it was a time in my life where i was getting sucked in and i just had to sit back and think like that this is not even for what though like i just i i i'm mad i never go back to that i I was regular then. I look mm -hmm. at myself nope, in, in the most humblest way possible. I'm not cocky at all, but I look at myself. I'm not regular, and then I was regular. That's what that's what they want. They, the average black man mm -hmm. either dies or goes to jail. We gonna keep it real. The average black man dies mm -hmm. goes to jail, and that's what they wanted. Oh yeah, we. He was a boxer. They they even said that in court. The, the lawyer was like, "Man, he's a boxer." The judge basically like so. But he in my court right now. Mm -hmm. And right then and there, I was about, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He he looking at this judge looking at me like I'm regular, but little do he know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, I, it's really a superstar standing in front of you. Talk and about I just it. had to show him. Like I can't tell him that. I just gotta show him. So from that day on, it was just up from there. Okay. Now I wouldn't be doing AJ justice if he was here, he would ask you this million dollar question. Cause me and him had this <laughs> ongoing debate when it comes to boxing. So I'm gonna ask you. Okay. What? I don't even know how he asked it, but I'm asking my way. <laughs> what, what would you rather finish a guy with? A liver shot or a knockout? A liver shot or a what? Or a, a head shot knockout. Uh, I'm gonna say a head shot knockout. It's different with a head shot. Cause like my last fight. It was a it was a hook to the to the chin that put him down and the crowd mm -hmm. went crazy. But yeah. the fight before that, dude got stopped with a body shot. They went crazy, but they they won't as hype. It's just something different about a head shot. Seeing somebody head snap back. 
and then ball ain't for then him get hit to the stomach. Like you get hit to the stomach, you just be like, oh, he ain't doing his ab or he ain't doing this. But when you get somebody with to the face, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. that nigga strong. Uh huh. <laughs> See now, I feel I feel so much better because I'm too I'm I'm I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm up now. I'm up yeah. now with the boxer that we've had on the show. I yeah, am you up are. now. I you am are. up to AJ. But look, I let me let me let me let me defend AJ because the the true the true premise of the argument was never <laughs> which one would a boxer a professional boxer prefer. You know. Um, Hill and AJ had an ongoing argument, you know, before we was doing the podcast and before we was talking to professional boxers, that uh, a liver shot is nothing. And, and Hill was saying that if I get hit, that if he get hit with a liver shot, that it wouldn't put him down. And AJ was telling him, bro, when you get hit with that liver shot, it's over. So if I phrase it like that, Nick. Yeah, I, I said about do, do Do you think that, that Hill could take a liver shot? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I had to put it in lamest terms. <laughs> Bro, I can't take it. My daughter punched me in the stomach. I go there. <laughs> so, say that again. I said, so look, he tried to, he so tried to, he'll try to, he tried to finesse you with the way that he asked that question for AJ. <laughs> that, that true debate was okay. basically, Hill was saying that when we watch fights and people, they get hit with the liver shot, it don't look, like you said, it don't look spectacular. So a lot of times he was saying they really not hurt. Like they 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 looking for a way out to just you know get paid quick. I can go down. I can take the body shot and go down. So is the is the liver shot really hurting people like that? I'm gonna be. Is it really hurting people? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Like <laughs> you know, you 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 could tell a lot by the fighter. By the first two, three rounds, you could tell if he came to fight, if he came to win, or if he came for the paycheck. See now, liver shots are much needed. I'd rather knock somebody out with a headshot, but liver shots are much needed. Due to to the Mexicans, they are tough. You are not stopping no Mexican. You are not knocking no Mexican out. Mm -hmm. A Mexican that's fighting for his family, a Mexican that's fighting for <laughs> me, you are not knocking him out with no headshot. I put that on whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to wear him down. The only way you will stop him with a headshot is if you tear his body up and you wear him down. You are not mm -hmm. knocking him out clean with no headshot. He was gonna walk through them punches all night. Mm -hmm. So liver shots are much needed, and liver shots are definitely hurting guys. But you know, you could tell, like even the fighter, you could tell, like okay, he just came for the chat. That body shot did not hurt him. Yeah. Okay, so so maybe here was it so so okay. You've been a little bit right here. I That's respected what, that. They call me Haymaker Hill. They don't call me Liver Shot Hill. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> now, oh uh, well, before before okay, we got a supporter. We got uh Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua coming up. Who you uh -huh. got? I got I got Fury. I don't see nobody beating Fury. Like yeah. I really think his his strongest his strongest test was Deontay Wilder and I yeah. felt like he won the first time mm -hmm. and the second time he proved to everybody he proved to me that he won the first time the second yeah. time. no he did so, he he did I don't see nobody beating Fury he's just one of them heavyweights that can box he got power I just don't see him nobody beating him and I definitely don't see Joshua beating him after he didn't lost to Ru uh Ruiz yeah. yeah they say style make fights but it's just like Ruiz didn't have nothing what Fury got and yeah you and he stopped you. I just yeah. can't see I can't see AJ beating Fury. I just can't see that. It's gonna be a good fight, but I can't see him beating him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. the exact same way. Yeah, I def I definitely agree. So following up with that supporter question, I'm gonna ask you the million dollar question. That, yeah, we got you know we all we got two million dollar questions now. Okay. So the this is the real answer. million dollar question. Million dollar answer. Let's all go. Right. <laughs> so your top five Pound for pound boxes in the game right now. In the game right now. In mm -hmm. the game right now. Okay, they got to be in order or just top five. They ain't got to be in order. Just give me your top five. Canelo. Mm-hmm. Um, Javante Davis. Okay. Okay. Shakur Stevenson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Earl Spence. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go with my man. Bud too. 
Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I like. I okay. like it. Okay. I like I the vibe. I like the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. And now, definitely. I'm. I, if you had to go for pound for pound best, who who's who's your number one? Just give me your number one. And in, in the sport right now, or over overall. In in the sport right now. Pound for pound best, Canelo. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And overall, what you think? Of, yeah, all of time, all, or overall, yeah. my pound for pound. Overall, your pound for pound. I, come on now, y'all, y'all know that answer. I'm from the seven five. Y'all, y'all already know that answer. Yes, yeah. sir. Y'all oh, know that answer. I really yeah. don't think he get enough credit as he he don't. Yeah, he man, don't. but he definitely changed the game. They looked at his lifestyle, and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying once he started to downgrade, they started to downgrade him. But y'all still can't take away the fact of what he did. Yeah. Yeah, he won't live him right. He was living life on the edge. Yeah, he definitely was. But you still can't take away what he done and what he what he done to the game. Yeah, man. Like, I, now, Shakur, wait, wait, wait. Shakur Stevenson, my man Shakur got Pernell Whitaker tattooed on his leg. That yeah. says a lot about him right there. Yes, yeah, sir. man. That says a lot. Man, when you can when your nickname can be Sweet P. Yeah, come on now. As a boxer. You have to be official because it's like, bro, like, ain't nothing sweet about him in the ring. So it's yeah, like all, all of all the boxes with sugar names and stuff like that. They always been deadly, man. Now hold up, we back. we might have to put Slick up there. Yeah, but nah, Slick, yo, how, how you come up with that? Yo, tell us how you got that. I like they that. That mean, that mean they can't touch you. They got it. They my, can't touch you. My coach and my mama used to always say. How do you like boxing, but don't like to get hit? I promise you, I do not like to get hit mm-hmm. at all. Like, I don't like to get hit. So that's how I got the name Slick. So it's just like, oh, don't get me wrong. Don't don't, don't confuse that with me not being able to take a hit. Because, listen, I didn't took some of the strongest hits, whatever. I just refuse. I don't like to get hit. Now, I'm I'm like a pretty boy. Like, pretty boy, I don't like to get hit. Nobody likes to get hit. So yeah, about to say, you're not my defense, like defense be on point. So now we got some pushback since he's not here. I'm gonna give him the chance to AJ. He said Javante, and like a, that's like four or five question marks. Please explain why do you have Javante Davis in your top five pound for pound? Please explain to me why you don't have Javante mm-hmm. Davis in your top five pound. Talk, mm-hmm. t- talk to him. <laughs> it's Javante, like, come on now. 25 24 fights like y'all can say he not fighting nobody okay you go out here and try to fight a nobody i i <laughs> out, out of those 24 fights you fight nobody you really think you're gonna knock out damn near all them people nope <laughs> exactly he's he's a he's a gorilla in there like yeah. look at the way he's knocking these guys out these are not just ordinary knockout these are knockouts of the year knockout he's yeah. ready for this mm-hmm. And then on top of that, what y'all y'all what what was the test? Leo Santa Cruz. Yeah. Leo Santa Cruz gonna throw a thousand punches. Leo Santa Cruz gonna do this. Leo Santa Cruz gonna do that. Leo Santa Cruz was on the highlight tape. Come yeah. on, man. Y'all cannot yeah. take away this. Like, and that up that uppercut hurt that man. Yes, yeah. like <laughs> man, this man is this man changing the game as well. This man is is talented. This man, y'all can't say, oh, he only power, he got speed. Y'all can't say he can't box. He boxed uh what was what was the dude name? His first title fight, I forgot it. Pedraza. He boxed yeah. Pedraza and I'm knocking mm-hmm. Pedraza out. Like, come on, man. Y'all yep. can't sleep on my man. So, so, so go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Like they, they do like Pernell Whitaker with him because his life outside the ring is not what they like, wanted to be. Par, so they downgrade him, but you can't take away what he do in the ring. I don't agree with what he's doing outside the ring. No, I don't. But yeah. you can't take away what, what he do inside of the ring. Yeah. Now we we you you left a notable name out in your top five and it's your top five so we're not gonna argue your top five but AJ uh, AJ if AJ was here he would give you some pushback and he would say where's Lomachenko? Lomachenko fell off my top five once he lost the TO. Talk about it. <laughs> he fell off, he lost, like like and then the excuses his shoulder like. Bro, just take a L. You win. What they say Friday? You win some, you lose some. Yeah. Uh-huh. Man, if your shoulder was so hurt, why take the fight? Huh? 
you're not pressed for money. You a three time Olympian, so you you get a paycheck without uh -huh. even fighting. So uh -huh. it's not the money. So that excuse just don't sit right with me. And then on top of that, you lost. Like yeah. you didn't do nothing to the later rounds. You you yeah. lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I tipped my head off to Tefimo. I made a whole post about it because I, I had money that he was losing, that he was mm -hmm. gonna lose. Mm -hmm. He made me. He he made me. I became a fan of Tilo. Yeah, I called him Tilo. I was already a fan, but right then and there, he almost made my top five list. I said, <laughs> <laughs> "You feel me?" That's what I'm saying. I mean, I I, so as he should, if he, you know, because people had Lomachenko. A lot of people lot had of people. Lomachenko in their pound for pound top five list. So it's like, you know, if he went in there. And he flat out beat him is what I thought. So it's like if you flat out beat one of the pound for pound best, you should at least be in consideration for being on that list, especially if you know what you had the resume like Tiafimo does. Facts. Um, Facts. But look, I wanna I wanna know more about more about Slick Nick, man. So so let's talk about your your pro debut. How, okay. How, what was it? Everything you expected. How was you feeling like, like, how was I, it? I'm not even going to hold you. Like, you know how, when you, you, you always picture something, like when you picture your dream, when you really dream about something and you picture your dream, you picture it. But when you there, it's just like, it's so unreal. Like yeah, me being flown out, me being put in a hotel room, the little Ben Sprinter bus coming to pick me up from the airport. I'm trying to put my bags in the back of the in the back of the van. They were like, "Hold, what you doing? You get in the car. We got that." Mm -hmm. Like, it just it just seems so unreal. And then walking into the venue, my stomach dropped. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. "Dang, I'm here now!" Like, I'm yeah. really, I'm about to really be fighting in front of fans. I'm about to be on TV. Like, I'm nervous. Like, my stomach bubbling. All this down the third. But once I hit that walkout, I'm like, I I. I talk to myself like people mm -hmm. call me crazy, whatever. But I talk to myself. I'm like, come on, man, you've been waiting 22 years of your life for this. You gonna fold? I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, no. yeah, you, you. I got a tight. <laughs> so I got here first round. You, if you look at my whole product, you first round. I was a little, and I'm saying, a little frozen, the. No, I'm saying, getting a little. Jealous. Get out. I, So that it was up from there. I, mm -hmm. I could have stopped my. <laughs> Where we at? Where we at? Uh, breaking up a little bit. He will come back. He, he, he be coming back strong. You back? You, you back? Hear me? You hear me? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Back. Since you mentioned it yeah, um, so... briefly, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, finish it. Go ahead, finish. You can hear us? Say that again. You were breaking up a little bit. Uh, but you can hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. It's probably because I was going under that bridge. Yeah, I okay. can hear you. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loading you up with AJ question, but since you talked about it briefly, what you your next fight, what's the song you coming out to? What I'm coming out to? Yeah, mm -hmm. what's the song you coming out to? I know. Yeah, yeah, we here, we here. Um, like I told my coach, I'm coming out, I'm coming out the dreams and nightmares, cause that song Ooh. just it, it just explains everything. I'm coming, I'm coming out to that song every fight until Meek Mill is walking me out to that song. Okay. Ooh, you just sold me with that. <laughs> hey, you just sold me with that, man. Hey, hey, look, bro, when Meek Mill walk you out to that song, because What's I up? believe it's gonna happen. Bro, I, after you win that belt on that same fight, bro, can I please get the? Can we? Can we? Three man weave get that exclusive after? Come on, man. With the chat, man. Matter of fact, I'm. I'm. A, I want. I'm, matter of fact, I want my coach or whoever, my manager, whoever that have my phone on standby. <laughs> I want y'all to as I'm walking out the ring, y'all get that exclusive the whole yeah, way. Walk to the back, that exclusive. That's, man, that's what I'm talking about. I told y'all this was gonna happen. <laughs> nah, I believe it, bro. Hey, I believe it, bro. Cause one, like I said, I've been doing my research. You definitely got the talent. You definitely are are gonna be the future of the sport. Um, you know, and I believe if you keep doing your thing, Meek ain't gonna have no choice 
but to walk you out, bro. He, he a boxing fan. He a Thank boxing you. Fan. He like, he ain't going to have no choice but to walk you out. You know what Facts. time it is. Facts. You know what and time I, it is. I, I rock with me because he he give, like, he really a, a believer of the dreams, turning dreams to reality. Mm-hmm. Cause somebody gave him a chance, and he yep. humble enough to give mm-hmm. other people a chance. So I like that. I, I rock with him for that. Yeah. He de- he's definitely in tune with the youth. Yeah, like, he definitely. He, Cause he yeah. know how it is. He know he know how it is out here, especially yeah. for a young guy on the come up. Cause he was that young guy before. Mm-hmm. I respect people like that. Because some people get up there and just forget about who they was, uh, who how somebody helped them, and they just forget about all that. Now you talked about playing other sports when you was growing up, with baseball, basketball, you know, all the kids' sports. Yeah. Do you still dibble and dabble on other sports? Yeah, uh, for like cardio, I go play basketball. I don't really rock with football too much. You know what I'm saying? I'm a professional athlete now. I can't, yeah. can't be getting hurt like yeah, that. You but can't. Basketball, you can be, you can get hurt too. But I do that rarely. For uh, I do it for like cardio, just something to do. Who your team? I don't really play too too uh, too much other sports unless I'm on the game. Who's your team? Basketball. Yeah. Basketball or football? Both. Basketball or football? Both. Both of them. Football is the Eagles. Mm. Okay, football the Eagles. And then basketball, I would have to say the Rockets. <laughs> yeah, it hurts you, hurt you one hard and left, huh? That's why you that's why you had to think about it. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it definitely it, it definitely did. It definitely did. <laughs> I knew for a fact we could always predict a Virginia 757 team. Like, <laughs> it's going to either be Cowboys, Philly, or the Steelers. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to football, yeah. yeah. Or, you know, or, or Washington, yeah. or Washington. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm about to or the dead skins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, man. Washington, Washington looking like division leaders, man. Um, how you think about Philadelphia offseason moves so far? Mm, I don't, man. Philly be pissing me off. <laughs> Philly be, they be, I don't know. Some of the decisions they make, I just sit back like, what the hell are y'all doing? <laughs> I be hating watching the game sometimes. Like, sometimes I watch the first quarter and just turn the whole TV off or just turn to something else. <laughs> and, and hope. I hope they do better when yeah, you. <laughs> I, I said maybe, maybe I'm bad, though. Maybe they yeah. messed up because I'm watching. Yeah, I, I definitely felt like that before with my <laughs> my squad for sure. I know a few that got that same superstition. Man, for real. But um, you no, know, we ain't gonna hold you up, you know, any longer. Like I said, what you do? You got a um next fight scheduled? No, nah, not oh. I had uh February thirteenth. On the Jojo Diaz card, but you know the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kovalev, Kovalev, the fighter Kovalev had got caught COVID, mm-hmm. so yeah. some of the fights from his card got pushed to my car, and a lot of fights got pushed off. And I was one of those fights, so mm-hmm. the fight fell out, and I wasn't able to fight. So they said some dates in April, so mm-hmm. I'm just staying ready, so I don't never got to get ready. So whenever I get that call, I'll be ready. So yeah, we hope. I'm hoping, hopefully, hopefully April. All and, right. it, and it'll be on the zone because you be definitely, golden boy. Definitely, definitely on oh, yeah. the zone. Can't wait, man. Can't wait. Yeah, and look, you, um, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I, I before we get you out of there, I, I you know I'm gonna ask you about your second fight. You know, Gilberto. Okay. Um, w- walk us through that second fight. Second fight. Um, I was really second fight was really on the strength of my my skills and how I really ain't know too much about dude. It was mm-hmm. a fighter from Mexico. We didn't see no footage on him. So basically, it was all about adjustments. And then mm. and I, I would have, have to make adjustments. And that's what my coach kept saying, adjustments, adjustments. But in my head, I'm like, I'm going to make no. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So. It was easy. <laughs> I was, in my head. I'm just like, I don't know, dude. 
So, so, I, right, let me tell you. So, I took advantage of it. I was more on aggressive Nick and not slick Nick because I sensed that he was scared. So, I had to hop on him before he gained any type of confidence. Yeah. And, both, and it led to the knockout. Now, I want you to expound on that point that you just said. Like you said, your, your coach was telling you, uh, um, adjustments, adjustment. But you saying you yeah. you in your mind you like, hey, this basically this right hook working. I'm gonna keep throwing this right hook. <laughs> like exactly. How do you go through a fight? How do you do you know when do you know when to listen or when do you just go with your feeling, your gut feeling? Um, it's it's really a fighter's intuition to mm -hmm. be honest. Like, and and when you've been with your coach long enough, he know when you know when it's time. Like. Okay. You don't go in there looking for no knockout, but you know when somebody ready to go. Mm -hmm. You you definitely know, and the coach know as well. Or like we got to the point where my coach really don't really gotta yell out too much. He know that I know I'm watching. Sometimes we'll go. I come to the corner. I'm like, yeah, coach. That you see that he dropping his his dropping his jab hand. He was like, I was just about to tell you that. So we seeing mm -hmm. the same stuff. So mm -hmm. it's 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 really like on some Roger Mayweather and Mayweather type stuff. Like. Mm -hmm. You really got. That's how my coach teach you, though. My coach teach you to make your own adjustments. Cause he, by the time it like, if you gotta, if you gotta wait back, if you gotta wait till you come to the corner for your coach to tell you what adjustments to make, nine times out of ten you lost the round. Yeah. So that makes perfect sense. So that you makes, gotta make them adjustments in the middle of the fight. And see, now that makes perfect sense to me because every fight that we, if I'm not with Cannon watching the fight, I'm texting Cannon. I'm like, bro. Yeah. Throw your hands, bro. Let them yeah. hands go. And yeah. if, the, if the corner's telling you that, like you just said, it might be too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that game. Okay, I like that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, my man. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, you giving me a, you know, that's insight. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, like I said, yeah. I, I, I'm fight. I regular fight. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that's a that's a boxing insight that that most people don't know. Like we sitting there, like, damn, why he ain't throwing his hands? Why he ain't letting his hands go? It's like, all right, bro, you losing this fight. Let these hands go. I'm telling you. And yeah. like you said, that may be too late. If I'm giving you this information now, that's too late. Facts. Facts. It's definitely too late. Good, Cannon. Uh nah. I was just I was just about to tell you know, Nick. We definitely appreciate your time, you know, stopping through to chop it up with us. Um, I really appreciate you being a man of your word. Um, one, I respect your game, uh, your boxing skills, um, your knowledge. Uh, young black man out here doing your thing. Three man weave, bro. You can come here anytime, talk sports with us anytime. You always welcome back. You know, we just want to thank you. Our supporters want to thank you. And we want to just, you know, wish you luck on your career. Um, I really the, um, appreciate y'all and this in this fire show. I really appreciate y'all. It was an honor actually being up here tonight and just talk boxing and knowledge, man. I really enjoy stuff like this. I appreciate y'all for even having me on, want me to come on y'all show. It's all it's it's all love, bro. Yeah. And before you before you get out of here, um, let um all the people know where they can find you at. On Instagram, you can find me at slicknick three underscore slicknick on Twitter, same thing slicknick, and on Facebook at Nick Sullivan. All right. So y'all heard it. That's Golden Boys, young, up and coming, future of boxing, slick Nick Sullivan. Yes, you got your boy Cannon. You got your boy Hill. AJ's on vacay, and we out. <laughs> Appreciate y'all, man. Y'all have a wonderful night and be safe. Now you do the same, bro. Most definitely. Yes, sir. <laughs>